I still can't stop thinking about what happened to me last weekend. It's been freaking me out so much I have to share it with you all. It started off as a pretty normal Saturday night. A few friends and I decided to go out for drinks at this little dive bar downtown that we frequent. It's this kind of dark, dingy place. But the drinks are cheap, and the vibe is chill, so we end up there a lot. Anyway, we get there around 9 p.m. and immediately spot a table in the back corner that's free. We grab it and start ordering beers. The place is pretty packed. Lots of the usual crowd, but not overly crowded or anything. As we're sitting there, chatting and drinking, I start to get this weird feeling like someone is staring at me. I glance around discreetly, but don't see anyone obviously looking in our direction. Figured it was just my imagination. But then, a few minutes later, I get that feeling again. This time it's so strong. It's almost making the hairs on the back of my neck stand up. I scan the bar more carefully, and that's when I notice this woman sitting a few tables over, just staring right at me. She's an older woman, probably in her sixties, with short gray hair and these piercing blue eyes. And the way she's looking at me is so intense and unsettling, it's almost making me uncomfortable to even look at her. I point her out to my friends, but they don't seem to notice anything out of the ordinary. They're all just laughing and carrying on oblivious to this strange woman who has her gaze fixed squarely on me. Every time I glance back over at her, she's still there, staring. It goes on for what feels like an eternity, this weird silent exchange where she's just locked onto me with this unnerving, almost haunted expression. Finally, after maybe 15 to 20 minutes of this, she abruptly stands up and starts making her way towards our table. My heart starts racing wondering what the hell is going on. Is she going to confront me? Is she drunk and looking for a fight? But as she gets closer, she doesn't say a word. She just walks right past our table, never taking her eyes off of me and heads straight for the exit. And as she's leaving, I swear I see the faintest hint of a smile curl at the corners of her mouth. I was so rattled I could barely finish my drink. The rest of the night I kept looking over my shoulder, half expecting to see that woman reappear. But she never did. Even now, days later, I can't stop thinking about it. Who was that woman? Why was she staring at me like that? What was that weird, almost triumphant smile as she left? It's driving me crazy trying to figure it out. The whole thing just felt so... unnatural. Supernatural, even. Like there was something almost otherworldly about the way she was looking at me. And I can't shake this nagging feeling that it wasn't just a random, meaningless encounter. That maybe, just maybe, there was something more sinister going on. My roommate Jenna and I decided to do a classic horror movie marathon on Friday night since we both had the weekend off. We ordered a pizza, grabbed a bunch of snacks, and settled in for a night of jump scares and creepy vibes. We started with The Shining because you can't do a horror movie marathon without that one, right? We were about an hour into the film when things started to take a really unsettling turn. I was sitting on the couch, munching on some popcorn when I started to get this weird prickling sensation at the back of my neck. It was that feeling you get when you just know someone is behind you, you know? But when I glanced around the room, Jenna was the only other person there, and she was completely engrossed in the movie. I tried to shrug it off and focus back on the film, but a few minutes later, the feeling came back, even stronger this time. This time it was accompanied by a sudden chill that seemed to radiate through the whole room. I pulled my sweater tighter around me, but the cold just wouldn't go away. That's when I noticed it. A faint, wispy movement out of the corner of my eye. I whipped my head around, heart pounding. But there was nothing there. Just the empty living room, bathed in the flickering blue light of the TV. Jenna must have sensed my unease because she paused the movie and asked if I was okay. 
I told her about the weird feelings I'd been having and how I thought I'd seen something move. At first she just laughed it off, said I was letting the movie get to me. But then, as we sat there in the silence, we both heard it. A soft, almost imperceptible scratching sound coming from the hallway. We stared at each other, eyes wide, as the sound grew louder and more insistent. It was definitely coming from the hallway, but neither of us dared to get up and investigate. We just sat there, frozen, listening to that eerie scratching, feeling the temperature in the room steadily dropping. After what felt like an eternity, the sound finally stopped. But the oppressive, bone-chilling cold remained. Jenna and I didn't say a word. We just grabbed our phones and huddled together on the couch, too terrified to even think about turning the movie back on. I don't know how long we sat there, but eventually the cold started to dissipate and we were able to relax a little. We kept the lights on for the rest of the night, though, and I don't think either of us slept very well. This morning, we searched the whole apartment and couldn't find any logical explanation for what we experienced. No drafts, no open windows, no pets, nothing that could have caused those strange sensations and that unsettling scratching noise. It's been a week since I moved into this old house. My granddad left me. Honestly, it's in the middle of nowhere surrounded by woods that whisper at night. I thought it was the wind at first, but now I'm not so sure. Anyway, I've been fixing the place up, trying to make it livable. It's been okay, aside from the odd noises at night. I chalked it up to the house settling or animals outside. That was until last night. I've been using the second bedroom as a sort of storage for all the boxes I haven't unpacked yet. Last night, I went to grab a book I knew was buried in one of those boxes. The room was chilly, which was weird because it's been pretty warm lately. I found the book and was about to leave when I heard a soft thump from the corner of the room. I thought maybe a rat had gotten in and knocked something over. I hate rats. I went over to check, moving a few boxes around but found nothing. I shrugged it off and left the room. As I was walking down the hallway back to my bedroom, I heard it again. A sound like someone softly tapping their foot against the floor. My heart started racing. I turned around and went back to the room, turning on every light along the way. The room was empty, silent now. I stood there trying to listen over my own heavy breathing, but nothing happened. I was about to leave again when out of the corner of my eye I saw a shadow move. I whipped around, but again, nothing. Now, I'm not one to scare easily, but I was freaked out. I decided to just go to bed, convincing myself I was imagining things. I barely slept, jumping at every little sound. Morning came and I felt silly for being so scared. It was just my imagination, right? Houses make noises. But as I made breakfast, I couldn't shake off the feeling of being watched. I kept looking over my shoulder, expecting to see someone. But there was never anyone there. I decided to get out of the house, take a walk in the woods to clear my head. It was nice, peaceful even. I was starting to relax until I found my way to a small clearing. There, in the middle, was an old, decrepit well. It looked ancient, covered in moss and vines. Curiosity got the better of me, and I approached it, peering down into the darkness. I couldn't see the bottom. As I was about to turn away, I heard it. It was coming from the well. My blood ran cold. I backed away slowly, then turned and ran back to the house. I don't know why, but I felt like something was chasing me. I locked the door behind me and spent the rest of the day trying to convince myself I didn't hear what I heard. But here's the thing. I've been hearing it inside the house now, always just out of sight, 
like something's moving in the shadows. I've searched the house, top to bottom, but there's never anything there. It's like the sound is following me, haunting me. I don't know what to do. I'm writing this because if anything happens, I want there to be a record. Maybe this is all in my head, but it feels so real. Too real. And if you're reading this, thinking about investigating old family properties, maybe just don't. Some things are better left alone. It started off as a joke. My friends and I found an old Ouija board in the attic of the house we rented for our college summer break. The place was an absolute steal, probably because it looked like it hadn't been updated since the 70s. We thought it'd be fun to mess around with the board one night. Not that any of us believed in that sort of thing. The first couple of questions were stupid stuff like, is anyone there? And what's your name? When the planchette moved to yes and then spelled out M-A-R-Y, we all accused each other of pushing it. The typical banter ensued, but then the atmosphere shifted. The room got colder. We asked, Mary, are you here with us? Slowly, the planchette moved to yes. We looked at each other, half amused, half unnerved, insisting someone was messing with the rest. We decided to ask something only the person asking would know the answer to, to catch the trickster. I asked, what did I lose last summer? I lost a necklace my grandmother gave me, but I hadn't mentioned it to anyone. The board spelled out N-E-C-K-L-A-C-E. -E. My heart skipped a beat. Everyone swore they didn't move it, and the looks on their faces told me they were telling the truth. We should have stopped then, but we didn't. We asked Mary how she died. The board spelled out D-R-O-W-N-E-D. -E the air felt heavier, and I swear the room dimmed, like a cloud had passed over the sun, though it was night. After that, things got weird. Lights would flicker, doors would slam shut, and there were always cold spots in the house. But the scariest thing was the feeling of being watched. I'd wake up in the middle of the night, feeling like someone was standing over my bed. Then came the whispers. It was almost like you could hear someone calling your name from the other room, but when you checked, no one would be there. My friends heard them too. We tried to brush it off, blaming it on the wind or the house settling, but we knew. One night I saw her. I woke up to a dripping sound, like water leaking. I followed it to the bathroom, thinking a pipe had burst or something. That's when I saw a girl in the mirror standing behind me. She was pale, her clothes soaked, hair plastered to her face. I spun around, but there was no one there. When I looked back in the mirror, she was gone. But the floor... The floor was wet as if someone had just stepped out of the shower. We left the next day. None of us said much about it, like talking would make it more real. I still don't understand what happened, and part of me doesn't want to, but I know we all felt it, saw it, heard it. It was too real to just be our imaginations. To this day, when I hear water dripping, my blood runs cold and I'll never touch a Ouija board again. Thank you for watching. If you found these stories gripping, don't forget to subscribe for more spine-tingling content. For another hair-raising tale, check out our suggested video. And if you're hungry for more eerie encounters, dive into our playlist featuring similar chilling narratives.